Space News, May 11, 2024. Hello again, thank you for being here with me once more, I hope you are very well today. I am Marie. This information can be seen as science fiction, or as the viewer sees best, and I post it for entertainment purposes only. Still, I take my information very seriously, and for whoever has eyes to see. This video is meant to commemorate the 500 video upload of my YouTube channel, thanks to all of you. I will be placing the front images of many of my past videos as a background for this edition of Space News, as you can see. As the first piece of news for today, the local Galactic Federation has organized a series of conferences and talks about why Earth must be kept in isolation from the rest of the galactic community, as well as contained within its own belief system, including its cosmology and limited science. These conferences are aimed at clearing out the increasing concerns, doubts and controversies that have been growing among the star races who are here in low Earth orbit, most of which are also active Federation members. The number of star races who have declared that they do not agree with how the Federation is handling the Earth problem has been increasing since five or six years ago, and even more so during the past two years. Yet most of those star races only say that they disagree but as far as I know have not done anything about the fact that they disagree, simply limiting themselves to state that during Federation Council meetings, however, some have become quite active, trying to convince other star races of what they see is wrong with how the Federation is handling Earth. The most prominent active Federation members who disagree are the Yael and their cousins the Sasani, as well as the Antarians and some members of the Surian conglomerate, among others, and without mentioning the entire Alcyon Council, who represent all the star races in the M45 Pleiades star system, and the Irma who have the strong tendency not to obey any rules except their own, and who have actively stated strong words against the appointed higher federation members, the Atorthans and company. The Irma have also stated that they will not tolerate anything that goes against their ethics, in this space quadrant, even more so as it is very close to their main home planet Avian, orbiting the star Vega at only 25 light years away from Earth, this is within its closest neighborhood of stars. As 25 light years is not much of a distance for modern starships, being in an average of only 15 to 20 minutes away in hyperspace, calculated sit time, ship internal time, or how long the trip feels for a passenger, using his or her watch. All this increasing discontent and doubts about the veracity and ethics of the Galactic Federation have caused them to organize a series of conferences, aimed at informing all the star races, about all the details of how they are handling Earth, and their plans for the future, openly stating that they will explain why there is no real problem on Earth, because everything is only a highly controlled staged theater, to give souls a learning experience. The contents of said conferences may be interesting to know and to study, yet no one from Talika can attend them, as we strongly feel it is not safe for any of us here, so the Tejetan captain, Goriel of Era, commanding officer of the newly arrived, SS Alcyon, and his crew, have volunteered to attend them in the representation of Queen Alanim and the crew of SS Talika. Captain Goriel and his ship the Alcyon have gained much respect from the Tejetan fleet, winning several excellence awards, placing the SS Alcyon as the most powerful and efficient starship of the entire fleet. I will keep you informed about what goes on in those Federation conferences most surely aimed at brainwashing and controlling, not informing, the star races stationed around Earth. This may be interesting. In other news, the Galactic Federation has declared that they will reopen the case of the very old, large starship that drifted into this solar system with no crew seven years ago, 
and that is believed to be of Earth human manufacture, yet the time frame is not clear yet, initially believed to be of Lemurian times. That starship is a total wreck, yet some of its most basic systems are still operative, but Federation races have been postponing investigating what went on inside, and its true history and origin, because of the strong hazards found inside, as the ship is a mess of twisted metals and all kinds of tubing hanging from everywhere, in a strong likeness to a human space nightmare movie or video game. So, the Federation seven years ago, simply opted to place the 2,000-meter-long, wrecked starship, in a stable high Earth orbit, as far away from regular space traffic in this area, basically sweeping it under a rug, as the expression goes. This ancient starship is shaped like two tubes or pipes, welded together side by side, and it is believed to have lost its crew in some kind of a fight long ago, as it has clear signs of battle damage on its hull, and it is also believed that it automatically drifted into this solar system, because its remaining systems were programmed to take, or bring, the ship back home, in the event that it loses its crew, and is left adrift in deep space. I will also keep you informed about this subject as it unfolds. Moving on to the next subject, it's been 500 videos now on this YouTube channel, and I feel it was just yesterday when we were celebrating the first 100 videos. I want to thank each and every one of you for all your support, it is you who are keeping me going, and who are keeping me motivated to write nearly every day, and to be able to upload videos daily. It is your interest that keeps me going. I enjoy writing very much and I have incorporated it into my daily routine. And as far as I can see I have no shortage of subjects to write about, because whenever I need some inspiration, I ask my teammates here, what subject would be a good idea, or would be necessary to share with all of you, and many come up instantly. And in any case, all I have to do is look around me, here, because I could write a subject about many interesting things, objects and technology that are around me all the time, for example about the makeup generating machine in my dresser, or the little anti-gravity gadgets found all over the ship, especially in the storerooms, and which are used to bring down to you boxes or an object that are stored above the reach of your hands and arms. And I also want to thank you again for your donations, because you are also making all this possible by helping me solve my basic needs, mostly food for me and my Swarounian sisters, Athena and little Sophia. I must let you know that many of your donations have been destined to purchase four different models of highly efficient, human-built computers, which are being copied and replicated here, and in mass, to equip the starships, Vigilant Eagle, Asterope and Alcyone for the upcoming human mass media incursion, which is scheduled to start in a few months. Please remember that Tejetan quantum holographic computers are not compatible with human digital ones, therefore all interaction between Tejetans and humans must be using digital systems, and this also means that no one will be talking to any form of Tejetan AI. Only real biological people will be talking. Without being planned so, the 500 video of my YouTube channel coincided exactly with my birthday, on May 8th, this past Wednesday, and that was a nice detail. I also want to thank all of you for all the amazing birthday messages and videos you have posted on social media, and which CIC has made available for me to see. You touched my heart and you made me very happy, thank you. This also keeps me very motivated to go on with this necessary work. The Tejatans here organized too much of a party for me, too big and too exaggerated, in my opinion, but I thank them from the bottom of my heart. They installed all kinds of light shows and laser beams all over the pool area, here inside Talika. 
The pool area is a large hall with artificial solar lamps above, which simulate a day at the beach, complete with all the radiation spectrum, except the harmful wavelengths. This also helps us generate our vitamin D, as we have no real sunlight here, or very little of it. The Tejitans placed several tables full of all kinds of food, mostly Tejetan, but there were at least three tables with human food there as well, mostly for me as I have special requirements, as I cannot eat much Tejetan food without getting sick. Athena also has this problem, but not as bad as me, and as for little Yaji Sophie, well, she can eat and digest a bag of carpenter nails, if she wants to. She can eat anything she wants with no problems. Alanim and the rest of the Tejetans invited just about all the crew members of the other Tejetan starships here, the Vigilant Eagle, the Saska One, the Asterope and the Alcyone, so in this pool area, which is quite large, as well as in the red piano room where we usually make our birthday parties, when they are not as large as this one and in the blue conference room directly above the red saloon, with its white entrance hall, all these places were full of no less than some 1,200 people. All of them were perplexed and hypnotized by the light show and the human, extremely noisy music Yaji was playing on the area's sound system. She was the DJ for the night, she always is, anyway. Most of the Tejitans who attended this party had never seen a light show, of those common in rock concerts on earth, much less have they ever heard such chaotic techno, and 80s, human music before, but they seem to like it, that's why we plainly say that Yaji is perverting them. I must say that I was feeling quite uncomfortable, receiving so much attention, so I tended to sit in a corner as much as possible, Yet I was always pulled away from my safe place, as everyone wanted to talk to me. There were also quite a few journalists from Teijita, who were covering the show for the folks back home, and I saw these as especially excited at the light and music show, as they saw it as extremely exotic and worth sharing in detail. They were talking to their cameras while jumping around, saying and yelling that they could not believe the richness of the stimulation to all their senses, with the light show, the noisy and strange alien, techno music, and all the exotic food. I fully accept that the crew of Talika, who have been here for many, many years, have adopted a lot of Earth's customs, because we must also take into account that many of us here have a lot to do with Earth also having lived there as step-downs for many years, so it is only logical that we would export the parts we like, into our culture. We do miss a lot of things from Earth's culture, especially food, and music, and we marvel at humans' capacity to move on and adapt to the hardest conditions, while still enjoying life. But what we miss the most, is the company of all the wonderful people we have known along our path. Before I go for today, I want to express a concern of mine, I want all of you to know that the concept of royalty in advanced interstellar cultures is just about the complete opposite of the concept of royalty on Earth. While on Earth, they pass on their lineage directly down to their younger family members, in advanced interstellar cultures, Anyone can turn royal, if the situation arises and he or she qualifies for the job. And that is what it is, a job. While on earth royals are nothing more than parasites who are non-empathic and couldn't care less about the people, in space, royals are at the service of the people, and they are their true representatives, and the ones who get things done for them. They must represent the entire culture in front of other ones, and they must be their entire culture compressed into one single person, being as perfect an example of their values and ethics as they possibly can, all while doing their best to overcome their own fallibility and personal limitations. It is a very difficult job that most can sustain only for a few years. I want to say thank you once more. You are a wonderful audience out there and you have been incredibly supportive towards me and my project.
Thank you. I love you all so very much. This will be all for today. As always, thank you for watching my video, and for liking, sharing, and subscribing for more. And I hope to see you here next time. With much love, your friend. Marie Swaru.